All the earth shall bow down before you, O God, and shall sing to you, shall sing to your name, O Most High. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Welcome to our Mass today, when we celebrate another one of the early Roman martyrs. Today's the feast of St Agnes. She was a young girl, perhaps only 13 or 14, who suffered martyrdom during the persecution of the Emperor Diocletian, between the years 300 or 304. This was the last major Roman persecution, and it was just before the Emperor Constantine actually made Christianity a legitimate religion. But many Christians were executed in this very brutal persecution, and Agnes is remembered as one of them. We know that she existed because only a few years after her martyrdom, a church was actually built over the place of her burial, which is still there, in the city of Rome to this day. St Agnes was a very popular saint, perhaps because of her youth, her purity, her innocence. She's always depicted with a lamb, and this is perhaps because of her name. Agnes in Latin is very similar to Agnus in Latin, which means lamb, and that's how she is always represented to this day, that lamb being a symbol of her purity and of her innocence. It's also the origin of one of those rather odd Catholic traditions that happens today in Rome, in the Basilica of St Agnes. Today in Rome there's a special Mass where two live lambs, all comfortably dressed up in flowered baskets, are taken into the church of St Agnes and are blessed during Mass with much bleating and complaining. Those two lambs are then sent off to a Benedictine convent in Rome where they are pampered until their wool can be shorn. And then that wool is used to make what are called palliums. The pallium is it's a, an article of uh, clothing, a vestment, that's only worn by archbishops. It, it's a white thing that goes over the shoulders and down the front with black crosses on it. And the pallium is a gift from the Pope to archbishops throughout the whole world. And all of those palliums are actually made from the wool of the lambs blessed today on the feast of St Agnes. The pallium is a link between the Pope and his archbishops, but also that idea that they come from the wool of those innocent lambs on the feast of St Agnes is also a reminder to the archbishops of the church of their connection with the martyrdoms, with that purity, with that innocence of that young follower of Christ. Whenever we celebrate martyrs, we're celebrating those who gave everything for Jesus, just as Jesus himself gave everything for us. So today, as we remember St Agnes, that young girl who gave everything for Christ, let us think about what we can do for the Lord and how much the Lord has done for us. As we prepare to celebrate Mass in memory of this great early saint, let's first call to mind our sins and ask for the gift of forgiveness. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who choose what is weak in the world to confound the strong, mercifully grants that we who celebrate the heavenly birthday of your martyr, St Agnes, may follow her constancy in the faith. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. The power of Jesus to save is utterly certain, since he is living forever to intercede for all who come to God through him. To suit us, the ideal high priest would have to be holy, innocent and uncontaminated beyond the influence of sinners and raised up above the heavens. One who would not need to offer sacrifices every day as the other high priests do for their own sins and then for those of the people, because he has done this once and for all by offering himself. The law appoints high priests who are men subject to weakness, but the promise on oath, which came after the law, appointed the Son, who is made perfect forever. The great point of all that we have said is that we have a high priest of exactly this kind. He has his place at the right of the throne of divine majesty in the heavens, and he is the minister of the sanctuary and of the true tent of meeting, which the Lord, and not any man, set up. It is the duty of every high priest to offer gifts and sacrifices, and so this one too must have something to offer. In fact, if he were on earth, he would not be a priest at all, since there are others who make the offerings laid down by the law, and these only maintain the service of a model or reflection of the heavenly realities. For Moses, when he had the tent to build, was warned by God, who said, See that you make everything according to the pattern shown you on the mountain. We have seen that he has been given a ministry of a far higher order, and to the same degree it is a better covenant, of which he is the mediator founded on better promises. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. You do not ask for sacrifice and offerings, but an open ear. You do not ask for holocaust and victim, instead, here am I. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. In the scroll of the book it stands written that I should do your will. My God, I delight in your law in the depth of my heart. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Your justice I have proclaimed in the great assembly. My lips I have not sealed. You know it, O Lord. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. O let there be rejoicing and gladness for all who seek you. Let them ever say, The Lord is great, who love your saving help. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Your words are spirit, Lord, and they are life. You have the message of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus withdrew with his disciples to the lakeside, and great crowds from Galilee followed him, from Judea, Jerusalem, Idumea, Transjordania, and the region of Tyre and Sidon. Great numbers who had heard of all that he was doing came to him. And he asked his disciples to have a boat ready for him because of the crowd to keep him from being crushed. For he had cured so many that all who were afflicted in any way were crowding forward to touch him. And the unclean spirits, whenever they saw him, would fall down before him and shout, you are the son of God but he warned them strongly not to make him known. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The author to the letter of the letter to the Hebrews is expanding on his theme of the, the idea of the priesthood of Jesus Christ, that he is the, the perfect 
great high priest who is able to offer the sacrifice to end all sacrifices, who is able to offer the sacrifice of himself. Jesus, as I was saying the other day, is both the priest and the sacrifice. Remember how in the Gospel last Sunday, when John the Baptist pointed him out, he said, behold, the Lamb of God. In, in St. John's writings, that title, the Lamb of God, is a really important one. We see it in the book of Revelation, the exaltation of the Lamb. Jesus is that pure and innocent one who is sacrificed on the cross, but he's also the priest who makes that offering on behalf of all humanity to establish a new covenant, a new relationship between God and human beings. Now, this might all sound very deep and a bit rich, perhaps, but this is such an important idea because whenever we take part in Mass, we're part of that action of Jesus, our High Priest. We're part of his sacrifice. The Mass is not just Jesus giving himself to us, receiving his body and blood. It is him once more, as it were, giving himself to his Father. That once and for all sacrifice made on the cross on Calvary is something that we are somehow part of. We're drawn up into this great movement of sacrifice and offering. And that's why the idea of sacrifice is such an important part of our faith. The idea that we give of ourselves, we give of ourselves to others, we deny ourselves, not just in Lent, but all through the year. And it's why on a feast like this of St Agnes, that idea of martyrdom, the supreme sacrifice, is not seen as a waste, but is seen as a complete fulfilment of our human destiny. Agnes, in her martyrdom, is sharing in that sacrifice of Jesus Christ. She, whose name is so close to the word for lamb, becomes close to the Lamb of God as he is sacrificed by himself in that moment of the cross. I'm getting all confused now. It's all very complicated, this, but that's the key thing. It's about giving. It's about self-giving. This is what Jesus, our high priest, does. This is what our martyrs do. This is what we are called to do. And we see that in the Gospel. That little snippet of St Mark's Gospel, which talks about the crowds coming to Jesus for healing. We perhaps sometimes take for granted that all Jesus had to do was click his fingers and could heal someone. But remember, there are passages in the Gospels which talk about power going out of him when he performs these miracles. These healings cost him something. There, we're not quite sure exactly what, but there was something that went out of Jesus whenever he performed one of these miracles of curing. So many people have come to him, so many are crowding round him. What does Jesus do? He gives, he gives of himself again and again and again. This is his priesthood, this is his martyrdom in this act of compassion and help for others. So there's so much going on here, it is very rich, it is very deep, but it's a reminder to us of what is at the centre of our faith, at the centre of our religion, what Jesus does for us. He gives himself for us and all that he asks is that we as his disciples seek to do the same, that we look for the opportunities not to take, not to keep, but to give. Let's pray that we may be able to do that and that St Agnes and all the other martyrs of the church, all those holy men and women who've gone before us, who've shown us that example of sacrifice and self-giving, may help us to do the same. So let's think of the prayers that we bring to the Lord for our Mass today. First of all, let's pray for ourselves and all members of the Church on this Feast of St Agnes, that we may seek to imitate her innocence and purity, and also that spirit of self-giving and trust in God, which allowed her to face the challenges of her life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. St Agnes is, amongst other things, a patron of young people because she was so young herself at her martyrdom. Many of you older parishioners might remember the Guild of St Agnes and walking in the Whit Walks under that banner. 
So let's pray for our young people today. Let us pray that they, as they face all the challenges and choices of life, may make space for Jesus Christ, for his call, for his way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And for a moment in silence, let each of us think of our own prayers for Mass today. And we ask Mary, Queen of Martyrs, to pray with us, saying, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Most loving Father, who give us the joy of celebrating St Agnes today, grant that as we remember her example of generosity and faith, so too we may be inspired to give of ourselves. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we proclaim your wonders, O Lord, in the Virgin Martyr, St. Agnes, we humbly implore your majesty that, as her merits are pleasing to you, so too our dutiful service may find favour in your sight. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy you give ardour to their faith. To their endurance you grant firm resolve. And in their struggle the victory is yours through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. And we, with all the host of angels, cry out, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, 
which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis our Pope and John our Bishop and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it them for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith, 
and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. On your stay, Qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tollis peccata mundi, Dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. You have prepared a table before me, and how precious is the chalice that quenches my thirst.
Let us pray. May the holy reception of the body and blood of your only begotten Son, O Lord, turn us away from the cares of this fleeting world, so that following the example of St Agnes, we may grow in sincere love for you here on earth and rejoice to behold you for eternity in heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alma, Redemptoris Mater, Que per via cei porta manes, Et stella maris, Succore cadenti, Surgere qui corvat populo, Tuque genuisti, Natur admirante, Tuum sanctum genitorem. Virgo prius, ac posterius, Gabrieli sabore, Sum ensi lodave, Peccatorum miserere.